Alright, so you guys may have noticed that I made two videos about Grace Randolph, one of which I discussed the reasons that people don't like Grace Randolph, and in summary, she's very combative, argumentative, and has insane hot takes. Even worse though, I've noticed, because she blocked me today, that she blocks anyone that disagrees with her. And then I started reaching out to subscribers and my fans, asking them if they have had a similar experience, because literally all I did was tag her in my second video, in which I described the situation of the drama between her and Kathy Young, the director of Birds of Prey. I didn't even take a side in the video, and at many points throughout the video, I defended her in both of the videos that I made on her. I said, well, in some cases, the hate against her is unwarranted. For instance, many articles were going around that Grace Randolph had claimed that Birds of Prey at one point had pedophilia subplots in the movie, and then I watched Grace Randolph's video, and she never claimed that, and I noted that, that the hate against her for that false scoop was totally outlandish. Now, she did get some things wrong about her scoop, but that part of it was not something that she ever claimed. So sometimes she does get hate for things that she doesn't deserve, in my personal opinion. I pointed that out, and in the video, she didn't even watch the video. She blocked it instantly. Now, I'm sure she watched it after the fact, but the point being is that it's not like she, you know, saw the tweet and then 20 minutes, minutes later after watching it decided to block me because she didn't agree with it. Really, she just saw that I tagged her in this video and that I made the video, and that was grounds enough for her to block me. Then I started talking to other fans, and I realized that she does that for everything. She literally is always like this. If you tell her that you disagree with her review of Batman v Superman, namely that you didn't like her review or her opinion of the movie in her review, she will block you for that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Grace Randolph likes to say that she's a journalist. She really isn't. She's more of a YouTube commentator like me. Because most of what she's known for is giving reviews of comic books, reviews of movies, reviews of TV shows online, and reaction videos. So that's what she's mostly known for. I would not classify her as a journalist, although sometimes she does get information correct with her scoops. But as a YouTube commentator, your business is putting your opinion out there. That's what you get clicks for. That's what people pay attention to. And it's almost like Grace Randolph is telepathically connected to you. She's able to know if you disagree with her before you even comment. I think before she even reads your tweet, you're already blocked. So I reached out to all of these other people and a bunch of my fans have said that they've had a similar issue with her. That she they she blocks them instantly. She's been blocked for no reason. And as I said in my video, it wasn't a hate video of her. It's not a drama video. It's not any of that BS. It's literally just breaking down an interesting discussion apart of a deleted subplot of Birds of Prey. And here's the thing. I mean, I I, I alluded to this yesterday, but this is important. It's important to note that debates about comic books and movies and entertainment and things in fiction are not as important as debates about politics and other things. They, they might feel more important to you if you're more interested in those things than politics, but it's important to keep the grand scheme of things of what really matters. And I'm not the type of person that wants to inflict politics into everything. That's why I've intentionally not really spoken much about, you know, everything going on with the uh, protesting and this and that. And it's not because I don't care or it's not because I don't have a stance on it or, you know, what some people say is that my silence is violence or that my silence is deafening or that I really need to speak out. And I understand that some people feel that way. For me personally, it's just that I really value these things being separated, politics and entertainment. And there have been points at which politics and entertainment become more and more intertwined. But, you know, when it comes to comic books and, and movies and, and things like that, I, I don't particularly feel that they should be intertwined all that much. But that's controversial and everyone feels like I, you know, shouldn't be making these videos right now because of what's going on or that it's insensitive not to comment on it. But I also acknowledge the importance of escapism and entertainment and what that does for people, especially people that are depressed, have anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, etc. The fact of having escapism via entertainment, whether that be movies, comic books, television, is very important. And when you start to inflict depressing elements of the real world in entertainment, that can undermine that, in my personal opinion. So the point in saying all of that is this. Grace is in the entertainment industry, not political commentary. And as a result of that, it's absurd to get so triggered by what somebody says that you have to block them. It's not like they said something insensitive about something that really, really matters deeply to the world. Because ultimately, someone disagreeing with your opinion on a movie doesn't matter all that much. 
I just think it's insane to me that Grace Randolph is literally trying to create a world in which she is always right. She wants to be in a position where every single tweet she gets is about, oh, your hair is so great today. You look so great today. Your take on this was so opinion. I love your opinions on this. I'm such a big fan, this and that. And admittedly, I don't receive very many negative tweets. I think a year or two ago, I was receiving many more negative tweets when I was giving my opinions on Batman Arkham and, you know, leaks and talking about rumors rumors and people are very upset at me and then of course now some people are upset that I'm making videos like this instead of Arkham videos so you never can please anyone and that's why on YouTube you really just can look after yourself and make the videos that interest you that you know you want to make but as a commentator you are in the business of sharing your opinion with others and receiving feedback on that and it's absurd that you would want to create a world in which Grace Randolph is always right you block everyone who is upset with your takes that they deem to be insensitive you delete everyone and just refuse to see any negative criticism. And as I said, these people that I tweeted about, they are not saying like, oh, Grace Randolph, like the tweets that I read in our first video where I broke down why people hate Grace Randolph. They weren't like that. They weren't using slurs or, you know, sexist language or saying mean things. It was nothing like that. It literally was like, Grace, I disagree with your opinion on Batman v Superman. And she blocks people for that legitimately. I'm not kidding. I have never heard of that in my entire life. And I, frankly, I've been on YouTube for seven years. I've blocked fewer than 10 people. I've blocked almost no one. And no, I'm not as famous as Grace Randolph and not as many people hear me or you know say negative things about me. And when you look on Twitter and you just search up her name, you're going to see a lot of negative things. But that's by nature of the business. And it's one thing if somebody messages you and says like, you know, let's say, quote, Grace Randolph, you're a bitch. I hate you. You're such a moron. You should just, you know, kill yourself. End quote. Let's say that she received that tweet. Okay, block that guy. That person's a troll. They're an idiot. But if somebody's literally like, hey, you know, I, I like your videos, but check out this. And here's the thing. You know, Jake also tweeted about this. My friend Irgen, he tweeted out that I used to be a fan of Grace Randolph. And then she literally blocked me because I was trying to have a discussion with her. I'm trying to engage with this person that I watch as a YouTuber because I think it's interesting. And people like, you know, tweeting at me, especially and saying like, dude, you're crazy. I can't believe you like Batman. I can't believe you like Suicide Squad. And I don't get triggered about that. I normally retweet people that say that to me. But Grace Randolph blocks them because she wants to create this mythical world where everyone agrees with her. And Grace Randolph is always right, where everyone loves Grace Randolph, where everyone compliments every single video Grace Randolph does and agrees with every single thing she says. But that world doesn't exist. She's trying to make it exist, but it doesn't. And frankly, compiling everything that I've talked about in the last two days, I've come to a conclusion about Grace. She does have some tendencies of narcissistic personality disorder, wherein she thinks, for instance, when John Campia says something about a topic that she discussed on her channel, that it is a subtweet of her. When in fact, John Campia had never watched Grace Randolph's videos and didn't know anything about her or her position on that issue. So an, an element of narcissism is perceiving other people's discussions as pertaining to you. It's that you're the center of the universe and therefore people, when they're talking about other things, they're somehow implicitly mentioning or thinking of you because you believe that you're always on someone else's mind. That's just thinking that you're center of the universe, which is really a telltale sign of narcissism. Moreover, Grace Randolph deletes every single comment that she receives that she disagrees with or that is critical of her video, even if it's just mentioning the audio quality or the video quality or her opinion on something. She deletes everyone. You don't have to be trolling her. It's not like these people are, are trying to trigger her. They're literally just saying, hey, you know, I like your videos, but I disagree with your opinion on this movie. Blocked. That is also a sign that she could be somewhat narcissistic. In my experience knowing narcissistic people, that's very common, where they essentially do not want anyone to ever challenge them because they are the center of the universe in their mind and therefore they're always right. They're never really wrong. So I'm I'm oversimplifying things a lot and I'm, I'm narrowing a very complex phenomena that is this mental health condition or this personality affliction or whatever you want to call it. And I'm boiling it down very simple to diagnosing someone I've never met. And obviously I have no jurisdiction or, or ability to do that. But I'm just pointing out that there certainly are some trends here that I'm noticing. Ultimately, Grace needs to understand that she is a commentator. People 
are going to disagree with her commentary. And that is normal. That's a part of the fun. And that's really where the divergence comes for somebody like me or most other YouTubers and Grace Randolph, is that Grace Randolph does not view that as a positive thing. She does not view that discourse as a positive thing. Most YouTubers actually are bored when every single person agrees with them, when every single person tells them their content is wonderful, that their opinions are perfect, and they agree with them wholeheartedly. Of course, you know, everyone to some degree is kind of, quote, narcissistic, end quote, where they want to receive positive comments, they want to receive likes on Instagram, they want to be told they're attractive, this and that. But to try to shut out all other discourse in a way to artificially convince or trick yourself that you're always right seems just insane. And frankly, there's no YouTuber I know who bans as many people as Grace Randolph. She must, at this point, have banned literally tens of thousands, if not upwards of 100,000 people. I mean, every single tweet she's ever received for the past several years that disagrees with her opinion is an insta-block. And when I tweeted out that I had gotten blocked, the entire thread was just dozens and dozens of people saying, yeah, I was too. I, I literally just said that, you know, her video quality was 480p instead of 720p and she blocked me. She just has such a fragile ego, it seems, and she's so sensitive. And, and it's interesting because I started this you know, week making videos defending her from all these attacks and people calling her all of these horrible names. And now I'm seeing why people dislike her. And here's the thing that I always do as a YouTuber, and I'm, I'm kind of revealing my hand a little bit, but here's what I do. Whenever I receive a negative comment, I always approach it like a customer service rep. I don't approach it from like, hey, fuck you, buddy. It's my channel. Who I, I didn't ask for your opinion. Go away. Rather, I approach them like an upset customer. This is someone that has subscribed to me. They've watched my videos in the past. They're here for a reason. Not only that, they're leaving a comment because they care about your work. They are engaging with you. They're engaging with the content that you're publishing, which in my opinion is very flattering. So when I see a negative comment from someone that's really upset about a video I've made, I am not going to approach that person and cuss them out and say, hey, fuck you, buddy. It's my channel. If you don't like it, get out of here. That's the worst way to do it because this person's commenting because clearly they care to some extent. And just like you see in customer service, people get upset. They get pissed off and they say things they don't mean. And what I often find is when I approach someone like say and just acknowledge the way that they are feeling about this video that I made and I say, like, hey, I understand why you feel that way. I understand that you feel like my analysis was short-sighted or you, or you agree, or I agree that I was, you know, clickbaity or, or whatever. When you approach it in that aspect and you're willing to actually be vulnerable and concede a point or two and actually discuss it with somebody, they are very quick to back down from their harsh criticism. So they really said that in a moment of anger and frustration because they feel like you just ripped them off. You clickbaited them. You told them a lie. You misled them whatever, and they're rightfully pissed about that. And, and your job as the content creator is to explain why you did that and why you made that decision and why you were not trying to mislead them. And it's the same thing in Grace Randolph's case when you have an opinion that's very controversial, that upsets a lot of people, that, you know, comes off as insensitive or whatever, you know, in some sense, you can just say fuck off if you feel that it's really unwarranted. But in some cases, she had said things that are very questionable that no one really understands. And it's not just like, oh, I don't like this movie. It's like she has this intense hatred for random people and she just has these incredible hot takes that no one understands why and she she also makes these very political statements at many points that can that can be upsetting after Carrie Fisher died she made some very weird comments about drug addiction and how awful drug addiction is when most people felt that that was insensitive to the family when they're mourning her loss you bring up her past mistakes was insensitive and I kind of agree so ultimately, I think Grace Randolph really, as she evolves in her career, should learn to be more receptive to feedback, negative criticism of her videos, but also her opinions. And when they're controversial, you know, there there's no need to be so combative and defensive. When people are pointing out their opinion, that's a part of what you're signing up for when you become a YouTuber. It's not something that you should resent and try to snuff out. And when you're blocking people, you're not really convincing people. In fact, you're turning people against you. Your fans that actually like you and comment towards you and disagree with you from time to time are being totally shut out from you and it's leaving this small small minority of people that are absolute stands and shills for you creating this false reality where you're a d like a god to these people and it's just very weird